glad you found 10 minutes to watch our show. I'm Carl Azus, and we are covering heat, holograms, and hotels today on CNN 10. We'll start in the nation of India. It is not unusual for heat waves to strike in May and June, but the ones that settled over the country last month made it India's third hottest April in 122 years. What kind of temperatures are we talking about? 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher in the Indian capital, New Delhi saw seven days in a row of that last month. And while 104 is near normal in neighboring Pakistan across India's northwest border, at least two cities there recorded highs of more than 116 degrees Fahrenheit late last week. A Pakistani government official said it was like a year without a spring and that that hadn't happened for decades. A significant lack of weather disturbances and thunderstorms throughout April kept temperatures high and rainfall lower than normal. That's according to the Indian government as reported by the Indian Express News Company. There's been huge demand for electricity, as you might imagine, and that caused a coal shortage in India. Most of the nation's power comes from coal, millions lost electricity for almost nine hours a day, and hundreds of passenger train routes were canceled through the end of this month so that more cargo trains could get coal to the country's power stations. Schools were closed in some states. Health advisories were issued. That's how India has dealt with heat waves in the past. Residents were told to stay indoors and stay hydrated. But not everyone's able to do that. One Indian official says farmers, construction workers, people who labor outdoors, many of them have had to suffer in the heat. Crops have been lost and water levels are down. So is there any relief in sight? Yes. This week, government forecasters expect high temperatures in northwest India to drop between 5 and 7 degrees on average. And by the end of this week, temperatures in Pakistan are predicted to be near where they usually are. But the start of the monsoon rain season, which can bring lasting relief to the region, is still at least a month away. 10 second trivia. Which of these doctors performed the first open heart surgery? Joseph Lister, Virginia Apgar, Daniel Hale Williams, or Alexander Fleming? In 1893, before x-rays were even developed, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams saved a life with open heart surgery. Operating with holograms might sound like a bit of science fiction, but the fact is, this is another example of how new technologies could eventually reshape medicine as we know it. This goes deeper than Pokemon Go, but let's start there. You're looking at computer-generated characters overlaid on real-world backgrounds. What if you could apply that idea to a complex medical procedure? That's one of the goals of mixed reality, as you're about to see, but the concept has its drawbacks. For one thing, you need the computer equipment to make it possible. That's expensive. Some people may have trouble adjusting to the technology. Virtual reality, for instance, can cause motion sickness. There are concerns that doctors could become too dependent on the technology and that they may not be able to effectively treat people without it. And it's all new. It hasn't been proven or refined yet in the real world, so it's too early to say if this is the future of medicine or an idea that won't work in practice. However, efforts to incorporate it are advancing. In this hospital in Israel, Elhanan Bruckheimer is mending a heart using tools the width of pencil points called catheters. But he can't see the heart with his own eyes. Imaging is how we understand what's inside the patient, what's going on, where we need to move our catheters. My depth perception has to be down to the submillimeter. In recent decades, advances in imaging technologies like x-rays and ultrasounds have helped make this process more accurate and commonplace. But Bruckheimer believes mixed reality technology can give surgeons an even clearer picture. He's developing a system that turns medical images into holograms. Where's the foot pads? Page heads up display. That might sound like something out of a movie, like the three-dimensional projections you find inside Iron Man's suit. But Bruckheimer says his company, RealView, has been working on a telescope eye for almost 15 years. You need a specialized overhead device to see these holograms, though. It's like a 3D printer of points of light. So it allows the physician to see a hologram that is hovering in front of him. He can visualize the information, and he can interact with it. And as Bruckheimer sees it, that benefits both patients and hospitals. You're going to do complex procedures quicker, 
easier and you can do more of those. Some bigger players in technology agree. Microsoft is partnering with hospitals and startups like New York-based Medivis to adapt its HoloLens to device for surgery. How does Microsoft's cloud platform interact with this technology? The ability for us to be able to pull the data from the different sources like electronic health records, that's all cloud-enabled technology. One issue that could arise? Slow bandwidth. This is according to Niam Ki Yuan from the National University Health System in Singapore. His team is collaborating with Microsoft to try out the technology for live operations. We are trying to test out use, the use of 5G technology to um, you know, improve our bandwidth and reduce our latency. Some are already working on what they see as the next milestone, projecting holograms right onto the patient's body. Microsoft believes that collaboration across the industry could help speed up progress. For Bruckheimer, it's all about what's best for the patient. Any improvement that we can have that can reduce suffering of our patients is my mission. Five months ago, a spacecraft lifted off from Texas. The vehicle was made by Blue Origin, and for the first time, it was carrying six passengers at once. Blue Origin is a private American spaceflight company that's received tens of millions in grant money from NASA. It doesn't say how much its 11-minute trip to the edge of space costs, but a ticket was auctioned off last year for $28 million. And some critics have questioned whether private spaceflight will ever become affordable for the average person. Blue Origin's mission in December was the third time the company took people to space. A couple of them took cameras to document their flight of fancy. Uh, Laura! Light this candle! Yeah! Here we go! It literally is a take your breath away moment. I mean, I literally was gasping. Then of course, once you're up there, once you have main engine cut off, once you have booster separation and you can unstrap, um, it is just magical. Uh, I went to the window, as you may have seen, and turned, it, turned myself upside down. Uh, that, so I had the perception of, you know, really kind of floating in free space above the earth. Uh, so that was amazing. I did have a little bit of motion sickness when I was in zero gravity near the end, um, but it was manageable. My eyes are watering. My perception, and it was just a brief one, um, was that I could see pretty much the entire North American continent. I was looking for things like the moon, uh, which I didn't see. And then, of course, when you see the sun, there is no atmosphere to scatter the photons. So it doesn't look yellow. It looks it looks bright white like a light bulb. Hey! Hey. Why go all the way to space just for a few minutes? I mean, once you're up there, why not check into a hotel? That's the idea by a company called Orbital Assembly. It hopes to start turning this concept into reality by 2025 or 2026, and it would be a luxury hotel. The company's former CEO told the Washington Post last year that a three and a half day stay would cost $5 million. But think of all the weight you'd lose. Up in space, Everyone's a superstar, every head is in the clouds, every lover's star crossed, everyone's above the crowds. Who needs a spa when you've got space? You've docked, don't need a parking place. The view is great unless you're scared of heights that fright at night just might make your feet wish for solid ground back down to feel all right outside. But one thing space cadets and astronauts can all assume is that a space hotel's remote as well as miles closer to the moon. Glad I got through that one. Want to give a shout out today to Lone Peak High School. It is in Highland, Utah. Thanks so much for watching CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.